Now we welcome you inside the Robert J. Collins Arena for another edition of Brookdale Men's Basketball here on Brookdale TV. Tonight, it's the Region 19 Men's Quarterfinal Playoff in Division Three Hoops. Along with my broadcast partners, Brian Goudsward and Danny Gulix here with me. My name is Dominic Sama. Now, Brian, to start with you, we've got a treat for the viewers, Atlantic Cape and Brookdale, part three. Now, these two teams split it one and one in the regular season. Brookdale winning here at home and Atlantic Cape winning respectively at their home court in, in Pitney Hall by six. What do we expect here tonight with Atlantic Cape losing three of their last four and Brookdale winning four of their last five coming into the end of the season? Yeah, well, the teams, as you mentioned, kind of going in opposite directions down the stretch of the year. But for this Atlantic Cape team, just so much firepower that they have offensively, led by David Coit and his region leading 30 points per game. But Richard Jones makes a pretty good sidekick in his own right. So Brookdale's going to have their hands full defending those two players. And I think, Danny, the key for Brookdale is they need their leading scorer, Kevin Mateo, to step up and really counter what the two leading Atlantic Cape players are able to do here tonight. Yeah, I agree with you there. Kevin Mateo is going to have to be a real heater here tonight. He's probably going to get the assignment of David Coy on defense. I think this game is going to come down to the rebounding and the assist numbers tonight. Both teams are pretty even with points, rebounds, assists. Atlantic Cape has an edge when it comes to efficiency. They have more. They shoot better from the field, and they shoot better from three. I think it's going to come down to whoever pushes the pace better, whoever grabs the ball better, whoever passes better. I think Kevin Mateo is going to really help, and Devin Strickland defensively has been a monster this season. We'll see what he can do tonight. What do you think there, Dom? I think Devin Strickland is going to be a huge factor because in the last game against Union County, Devin Strickland netted 22 points, 16 of them coming in the first half of play. So we'll have to see what happens with Strickland, Mateo, and the rest of the squad. And of course, Atlantic Cape with the league's leading scorer, David Coit, at 30.3 points per game. Again, leading the entire league in Region 19 Division Three men's hoops. So we'll see what happens here in Atlantic Cape and Brookdale, part three here on Brookdale TV. Stay tuned. We've got a treat for you here tonight in Collins Arena. Guard a 5'9 freshman from Columbus, New Jersey, number 11, David Coit. Forward a 6'6 freshman from Lexington, South Carolina, number 13, Ansuelo Young. At the center, a 6'7 freshman from Trenton, New Jersey, number 0, Najee Wright. The assistant coach is Kevin Allen. The head coach for the Buccaneers in his first season is Alan Ragland. Jersey Blues in his 31st season 
And we are set for tip off here in Lincroft, Atlantic Cape and Brookdale, part three here on Brookdale TV. For the first half, it will be yours truly, Dominic Sama, and on the color, Brian Goudsworth. Then Brian Goudsworth will switch over to play by play. And Danny Gulix will join us in the color, and I will be on the sideline. Alan Azoji and Answello Young tipping it off, and we are underway. Brookdale controlling the tip. Andre Wells with the fresh cut running the floor here for the Jersey Blues. Giving over to Kevin Mateo. Back to Wells at the top of the key. Here's Ron Flood over to Wells. Halliburton thought about it and Azoji got picked away. It's going to stay. Check that. Go to the Atlantic Cape Buccaneers. Brian Galsward, what do you think so far of this game? Atlantic Cape, again, three losses in their last four games ending the season. So they're ending the rec their record. 18 and six, while Brookdale ends 21 and four, winning four of their last five. Yeah, we talked about in the open all the star players on the Atlantic Cape side offensively, but one thing that you notice right off the bat, the energy that's in the building, it feels like a playoff atmosphere, and that is something these players are gonna have to contend with throughout the game. Now Nazoji can't secure that pass. That was Answello Young tipping it away and staying with the Brookdale Jersey Blues and Andre Wells set to inbound from under the basket. Winner of this game moves on to play either Montgomery or Union and the winner of that game as Ron Flood puts it up, no good. Alan Azoji secures his own rebound, puts it up, no good, and a rebound secured by David Coit, the leading scorer of not just Atlantic Cape, but Region 19. Tries to push off Kevin Mateo, and he is called for a charge. Yeah, that's kind of a good way to rattle him early, take a hit there like Mateo does, and Paul Chizek is going to be happy with that. Great for Brookdale that they have a coach with as much experience as Coach Chizek brings to the table. Over 30 years, he has seen every situation, and he knows how to get his team ready for all of it. And explains why he has a record of being 34-0 in 2018, being the national champions and finishing 33-1 in 2013 and also being national champions in that year. Andre Wells taking his side, kicks it over. Halliburton thought about it, almost stolen away, but Andre Wells putting it up and blocked from behind. Possession will go to the Buccaneers. We're scoreless after a minute and a half here in Lincroft. So yeah, and go figure, you have two of the highest scoring teams in all the region, Atlantic Cape number one in points per game, but so far a defensive struggle, granted it's only been a minute and a half, but this should be a fun one tonight. Yeah, five versus four as number 13, Answello Young jumps at home to start the game and start the scoring off for the Atlantic Cape Buccaneers. Kevin Mateo over to Wells. Thought about pulling up with a three. Azoji goes inside, kicks it. Halliburton open at the corner, knocks it down. And that's how the scoring starts off for the Jersey Blues. The energy here, electric in Collins Arena. Now great find to Halliburton in the corner. He was wide open and he knocks it down. And Swallow Young posts up against Alan Azoji. Puts it up, no good, rebound taken by Azoji, and here comes Andre Wells, the floor general. Takes it over the timeline, over to Mateo, the leading scorer. That's an NBA range three, is short. Rebound by Mateo, goes inside. The ball's gonna go off of Richard Jones' foot, stay with the Jersey Blues. Yeah, and we've seen Mateo, he's not shy about shooting. It, it's not just one foot behind the line, he could take it five and even beyond feet clear that three-point arc and a lot of times he Andre makes Wells them. Gets over to Halliburton and now Mateo. Sorry for the interruption by the way. Wells over to Halliburton and now Flood going inside. Reverse layup is short. Rebound by Young. 
6'6", freshman forward out of Lexington, South Carolina. Richard Jones goes inside. He's going to get bumped before he goes in for a layup. Fouls on Andre Wells, so that'll be his first and the team's first. Last time these two teams met, Atlantic Cape was the victor, 102 to 96. Shot by David Coint, no good, and here comes Brookdale. Wells over to Mateo, faked it out, but it's gonna stay with Brookdale. Yeah, it's the second time that Mateo's kinda had it kicked away from him, so Brookdale have it on the side. Mateo set to give it over to Wells. And here comes Andre Wells. Mateo looking to go inside, takes a baseline. Almost stolen away. Halliburton, another corner three. Strong and a rebound by Flood. Here's Wells and he lays it in. Yeah, well, good teamwork there off the initial miss. You can see Flood getting on the offensive rebound and Wells nicely cutting through the paint with the floater. Just saw the replay there and here comes David Coit inside, putting it up and laying it in. Oh my goodness, what a move by David Coit to it, the rim. He's just such a skilled offensive player. I mean, you don't average 30 points a game by accident. He's a great shooter, but he can get to the rim as he just showed there. Just a tough player to defend. He is a heck of a player and has limitless range. What a save by David Coit off of Niles Halliburton as a possession goes back to the Buccaneers. Now they've had gotten their hands on the basketball very aggressive early on getting up on Brookdale. So known for their offense, but early on their defense showing up as well. Paul Chizak getting a warning from the referee. So that's half of a technical, but not an actual technical foul. It's like almost a minor technical, no points will be given. I guess they didn't like something that he said. I mean, he couldn't really see too much. Granted, he's pretty far from our spot up here, but. So we're broadcasting up here from the skybox. David Coit set to inbound over to Najee Wright. The 6'7", Trenton native, gets over to Richard Jones. Looks to go inside, kicks it, and that's Justin Boston, the lefty shooter. No good, and a rebound by Halliburton. That's gonna be a foul on Najee Wright. Now we got a nice crowd on hand, fans for both teams, and you're gonna hear a lot of noise. This does not feel anything like a regular season game that we've done a lot of here. This is an energy level ratcheted up to new heights. Jonathan Cosme Almeida, number four in the blue jersey, checking in for Atlantic Cape. Halliburton, double teamed in the corner. Alan Azoji looks to go inside, kicks it to Mateo. He's at the bottom of your screen. Here's Azoji. Kicks it over, Flood saves it, but before he saves it, Ref says he stepped out of bounds, so we'll go back to Atlanta Cape. And it broke to a little bit trouble getting settled in on the offensive end, a little bit sloppy. More turnovers, I think, than Paul Chizek would like so far. David Coit over to Justin Boston. He'll take it from the top of the key. No good, and a rebound by Azoji. Mateo, and now Wells with it. Play call being barked out by Paul Chizek, and here's Wells, almost lost his own handle. Here's Halliburton, goes over to Azoji, puts it up, no good. Azoji, the recovery, no good, and he'll be fouled going up. See, that's what they need in times like this, with Azoji being just one inch taller than the tallest guy, the tallest player on the Buccaneer squad. Yeah, and Brookdale missed him the first semester of this season. He didn't join them until the second half, but he just brings a presence with that six foot eight frame and his rebounding ability, much needed for Brookdale. 
And Azoji averaging 55.2% from the free throw line, 55%. He came in just in time when Timmy Jombala suffered an ankle injury mid-season. So he's been a great asset for the Jersey Blues coming back after the 2019 season that he spent with Paul Chizek. Najee Wright looks to go inside, puts it up, and lays it in easily on Alan Azoji. Yeah, well, we talk about David Coit getting a lot of the headlines, but Richard Jones is far from a slouch in his own right. He can really score, and you see him get to the basket. Andre Wells knocks down the three from the top of the key. Now Brookdale, a couple threes. We saw Halliburton hit from the corner, and that time Wells to give them the lead again. Najee Wright looking to take it himself again. This time no good. Cosme Almeida puts it up. No good and a rebound by Azoji. And here is Wells. Going aside, here's Kevin Mateo. Puts up a three. Pure and a foul. That'll be a chance for a four point play for Kevin Mateo. A huge play made by Mateo to start off the scoring for Brookdale and a timeout called by first year head coach Alan Ragland of Atlantic Cape. That'll be a 30 second timeout so we'll keep it here. Brian, what do you have to say so far about this start and Kevin Mateo with that huge play just a second ago. Yeah, you don't see too many four point plays. Certainly hope he's able to convert on it but I just like that possession just no hesitation whatsoever from Mateo on the catch and shoot and gets fouled as well and that makes the home fans. Looks like the Brookdale baseball team taking this one in as well and they gotta be liking what they see so far. They got everybody here, whole crowd here in Brookdale. 12 to six, Brookdale on top of Atlantic Cave and a chance to make it 13 to six with a Kevin Mateo free throw. Mateo leads the team in free throw shooting with 85% from the charity stripe. Last time these two teams met here in Collins Arena to be specific, it was late November. You and Ian Mulhern were broadcasting this game and Brookdale won by only four, 97 to 101. That yeah. must have been a hell of a game. I mean, bo both games that we saw in this matchup were close, so got to expect another one here tonight. Azoji puts it up, and it's going to be called for a charge on Azoji. Yeah, I think Azoji thought it was going to be an and one opportunity and instead take the basket off the board because they call an offensive foul. That's the reason for the rather heated discussion between Paul Chizek and one of the officials. You can probably hear the boos from the crowd here in Lincroft. You got a passionate crowd here in Monmouth County. As Richard Jones looks to go inside, step back jumper, no good, and a rebound by Halliburton. Andre Wells takes over the timeline at the logo. And kicks it to Halliburton at the corner. Back to Wells, and now Mateo, guarded closely by David Coit. Azoji over to Wells. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Azoji, look at go inside. Stripped away, falls on it. Looks to be a held ball. Possession toward the Atlantic Cape Buccaneers out of Mays Landing. Now it looks Buc like we're gonna get a couple substitutions here for the first time. Yeah, Timmy Jombala checking in, the Montenegro native for the Jersey Blues and for Alan Azoji, while for Atlantic Cape, Answello Young checking back in. David Coit, jab step, goes inside on Mateo, step back Jay, in the paint is an air ball. And here comes Mateo in hot pursuit. Looks to go all the way inside, stripped away by Richard Jones. 
and it will stay with the Jersey Blues. Good job by Jones getting back in transition and not committing a foul as he got a good clean swipe on the basketball and forced the inbound. Kobe Sylvester and Devin Strickland checking in for the Jersey Blues. They're in for Wells and Halliburton. Devin Strickland, don't count him out because he scored 22 points in a competition against Union County just about a week ago. Sylvester inbounding from under the basket over to Mateo. Risky throw, but Mateo secures it. Ron Flood over to Strickland. Mateo almost got stolen by Coit. Mateo handles it, tries to step back. Here's Flood over to Strickland. Kicks it to Sylvester, open at the other corner for three, and knocks it down. Lucky shooter's roll from the front of the rim. Kobe Sylvester with his first points of the game, and Brookdale now up by nine. Talk about getting a shooter's bounce off the front rim. Looked like it was gonna be short, and it bounces through. And Swallow Young thought about a dunk, but got stripped away, and it's off him, as the refs say, so. It will go back to the Jersey Blues. Uh, this has been an impressive start for Brookdale, building up a nine-point lead. One area where they have the advantage, despite Atlantic Cape and all their offensive weapons, they only have six players available, while Brookdale can go ten even more than that deep with their roster. Timmy Jombala looks to go inside. He had the chance to make a nice layup. He did split the double team. Mateo over to Strickland, nice feed, and a rebound secured almost by Jones, but it's secured by Young. And here comes Jones, all the way inside. Blocked by Timmy Jombala, but a foul looks to be on Ron Flood. And we'll take another look here to see how much contact there was. With Jombala pretty straight up there, but they get the foul. Jizek, incredulous with that call, having his hands out. Now this is not the guy to put at the line shooting as he misses, but I was just about to say shoots just under 90% for the year. Yeah, he's got the cheerleaders distracting him from, from behind the basket, so that might be just enough of a distraction for him apparently, but he makes a second at the line, so. I guess that won't matter. <laughs> Here's Kevin Mateo over to Halliburton. Risky pass, almost went out of bounds. Halliburton kicks it over. Mateo open for three. No good, and a rebound secured by Ansuelo Young. Richard Jones over to Cosme Almeida. Goes inside over to Najee Wright, puts it up, and he's bumped, and a foul called. It will be on... Looks to be on Jombala. And Brookdale's ready to get Ozoji back in. He presumably will take Jombala's place after the latter has picked up two personals. And yeah, Najee Wright averages 87% as a big man. He's the tallest guy on this Atlantic Cape squad, and he averages 87%. Makes a first as a Zoji checks in for Jombala. Yeah, this Buccaneer team, that's a great area of strength. As a team, shooting just under 80% from the line. Talk about getting it done. And Wright splitting the pair himself as Mateo gets over to Halliburton. Pass almost stolen by Coit, and here's Mateo. Kicks it over. Sylvester pulls up with a jumper and knocks it down. Well, we've often talked about Sylvester. When he comes in, he just provides that instant offense, that time stepping into a shorter range jumper and easily connects. He is one heck of a shifty player as David Coit puts it up and talk about shifty while on the other end, David Coit does his part, taking yeah. it to the 10. I mean, there's so many impressive numbers about him, but the fact that as a guard, he shoots 50% from the floor is just off the charts. And Sylvester again, he's got seven. 19 to 10, Brookdale holding a comfortable lead. Richard Jones, long range and air balls it. 
Yeah, that's just an ill-advised shot. I mean, he had just practically crossed over mid-court and decided to put it up basically the white line out there and comes up with air. Yeah, ill-advised shot there as Najee right checks out. Boston back in. Pass from Wells intended for Sylvester was kicked away by Justin Boston, so it will stay with Brookdale. Azoji thought about the shot over to Halliburton. Bad pass intended for Strickland. And here comes David Coit all the way to the rim, puts it up and in with all the defense. Yeah, and if you're Brookdale, you cannot allow him to find his rhythm. So far, Coit and Jones have been held under control, but once they start scoring, it could start to become a long night. Azoji, the jumper, in and out, and a rebound secured by Sylvester, and got picked away from behind by Jones. But Sylvester, the ball was off of Sylvester, and will go with Atlantic Cape, so... Richard Jones successful on that steal. Richard Jones over the logo, over to Coit, closely defended by Kobe Sylvester. Pulls up with a three ball and knocks it down. David Coit lighting it up for Atlantic Cape. Typical of David Coit as Paul Cheese calls a timeout. Brookdale up by four still, nine and a half minutes to go in this half. We are just over halfway through the first half here on Brookdale TV. And welcome back to this highly contested and highly anticipated matchup between the Atlantic Cape Buccaneers and the Brookdale Jersey Blues. If you're just tuning in right now, welcome aboard Dominic Sama, Brian Goudsworth bringing to you the first half of this game. Brian Goudsworth taking my place and calling the rest of the game with Danny Gulix as the color analyst for tonight's matchup. Brian, what have you seen so far? And of course, Paul Chizak calling that last time out because of David Coit pulling up with a three, even though he was hotly contested by Kobe Sylvester. Yeah, well, you can see him be the fastest to call timeouts if he doesn't like something that he sees on the defensive end. And like I was saying before, you can't allow Coit to start to take over the game. Andre Wells looking to take over the game himself. On the other end, making it 21 to 15. Brookdale on top of Atlantic Cape. And here's David Coit going right by Kobe Sylvester. Now he's starting to do it all. We saw him make a three a moment ago, but his ability to get to the basket already well in double figures and looks like he just might have another big night. Sylvester, the three, and knocks it down. He's got 10. Check that, that was a long two. Sylvester, his foot was on the line. So 23-17, Brookdale on top. Justin Boston thought about it. Thought about giving it over to Answello Young. Puts it up and rebound secured by Azoji. The foul's gonna be on Boston. Kevin Mateo is gonna come back in. Brookdale really can't afford to be without him on the floor too often because you now there were some changes with the roster down the stretch of the season and so Mateo really takes on that leading scorer role now. Andre Wells over the timeline. Looks to go inside, kicks it over. Halliburton, Sylvester gives it over to Wells and now Mateo. Great ball movement by the Jersey Blues. As Halliburton gets it over, Sylvester, check that, that's Alan Azoji who gets bumped, puts it up, and it's going to be a foul going up. And there you see the advantage that Ozoji has with his height, that he can you know, take that pass down low in the painted area, and he's very good at initiating the contact. So Ozoji will get a shot at two at the line from the charity stripe. Makes the first.
Azoji missing the second, splitting the pair. Rebound made by David Coit. As Coit, thinking about pulling it up but over to Najee Wright, was not afraid to shoot himself. And it's going to be a foul on Jonathan Cosme Almeida. And Cosme Almeida guilty of pushing off, trying to get an offensive rebound. And that's now seven team fouls already. That's going to be one and one now for Brookdale. A huge plus for Brookdale as every time they head to the free throw line, every time they get fouled, should I say, Brookdale will have an opportunity at one and one at the line or two shots if it's a shot going up. So Kobe Sylvester will try and make a one and one here. He makes the first, so everybody will remain where they were just at, and Sylvester will go for the second. You know, one thing about Sylvester, you could just tell that he knows his role so well. He hasn't started a single game this year for Brookdale, but when he comes in, he just has that ability to quickly put points on the board. Sylvester making both at the line. He averages 69th, check that, 70% from the free throw line. Richard Jones over to Ansuelo Young, puts it up and lays it in. Yeah, you can hear Paul Chizek yelling to his players. That's not what he expects of them. And a possible alley-oop from Wells intended for Azoji couldn't go. And now here comes David Coit putting up the floater. Banks at home. And Coit just kind of gliding to that foul line area. Off balance shot. Knows exactly what he's doing with the ball in his hands. And he makes it look easy. Wells, defended by Cosme Almeida. Goes over to Sylvester, and now Azoji, turnaround jumper, switches at home. Yeah, and Azoji for a big man, six foot eight, he's got a soft touch from like 10, 15 feet from the basket. David Coy from NBA range, and air balls it. That is a Surprise, at least to my surprise, as David Coy typically has limitless range and doesn't usually airball like that, so we'll go back to the Jersey Blues. And the crowd letting him know about it a little bit. A guy who shoots 50% from three. Yeah, you don't see too many airballs from a shooter of his quali quality. Ron Flood, once he gets checked in, gets stolen away by Najee Wright. And here's Jonathan Cosme Almeida looking to go inside, putting it up. And Niles Halliburton the rebound. And here's Sylvester. In hot pursuit, kicks it to Ron Flood. That's a three. And off the back iron, Flood with his own rebound, picked away. And here's David Coit, Kevin, Sil Kevin Mateo one on one. And just a missed layup by Coit. And here's Mateo going inside, blocked away by Najee Wright with authority. But nonetheless, a foul called. So Kevin Mateo. Will head to the line for two. Yeah, good explosive move by Mateo Wright. Got all ball on the rejection, but I get the blocking foul on, on Swello Young, his second. You got the Moppers coming in to wipe away the sweat from the players on the court before we go on with the game. Kevin Mateo shooting two at the free throw line. Atlantic Cape at eight fouls so far in this half. We're just about 75% done with the first 20 minutes. Got a nice crowd on hand. We saw the baseball team in a, a group before, but the women's team as well here at the Collins Arena taking in the action. Yeah, you have a whole bunch of people here, parents, siblings, relatives. The, of course, you said the baseball team, women's basketball team, they're getting ready to play Northampton uh, in an away game tomorrow. That's the women's Region 19 semifinal. They're hoping 
their counterpart on the men's side get an opportunity to play in the semifinals later this week as Ron Flood gets it picked away and he takes it all the way and lays it in. Timeout called by Alan Raglan. He is irate with his squad, the Atlantic Cape Buccaneers. So this will be a 30 second timeout. So we'll keep it here. 5.55 to go, Brian Goudsward. Brookdale still holding this lead. Yeah, 31 21. You know, Brookdale is at their most dangerous when they're getting out in the open floor, like we just saw in that last possession, getting the turnover and flood just coasting into the basket. I thought he might look to dunk because he had so much space, but I like the under control and just opting for the easy layup. And Brookdale thus far in control against this high scoring Atlantic Cape team. Coming off the timeout, we're at 5.55 to go. You know, this Brookdale and Atlanta Cape game, very high pace so far. But you can never count out Atlanta Cape when they're down by 10 like this. Last time these two teams played, Brookdale was up by well over 10, and Atlanta Cape triumphed in the end. there was some sort of outage the scoreboard just went blank and they're going to recalibrate that and meanwhile we get a little mini timeout here I have never seen that happen yeah sounds like what was a Super Bowl 46 <laughs> was it between in New Orleans yeah it was in New Orleans the Ravens, Ravens 49ers yep yeah the brotherly love matchup between the Harbaugh's you can see the, the women's team they're getting right there on the screen they're getting ready to again play at Northampton a rematch against Northampton coming off a hard fought defeat that was just a week or two ago at least uh, it wasn't a full outage because the lights didn't go out it was just the scoreboard so they got that up and running and it looks like we'll, the delay will be limited and we're ready to resume David Coit set to inbound. This is a great matchup between two of the leading scorers, David Coit and Kevin Mateo, I might add. But Richard Jones looks to go inside, but he gets fouled. It's a defensive foul. Looks to be on Andre Wells, and indeed it is. Brookdale at five fouls, so any on the floor foul, Atlantic Cape will continue to inbound without any opportunities for free throws. Justin Boston set to inbound. Check that David Coit filling in for Justin Boston switching places here as Danny Galashevsky during that mini break checks in for Andre Wells. Wells had two fouls so far in tonight's matchup as Najee Wright looks to take it himself against Niles Halliburton, the mismatch no good. And it's going to be another foul on Halliburton this time. And now it's one foul away from becoming a one in one situation, but for this one, they will inbound it. David Coy yet again inbounding for Atlantic Cape. I think this is what Atlantic Cape is going to want, and that is exactly what they'll get. Najee Wright heading to the line for two. Check that, that's a one and one, but I think that'll be a shooting foul, so probably will be an opportunity for two at the line. Paul Chizek not agreeing with that foul. Is Najee Wright the lefty shooter, number zero, the biggest guy in the entire, the biggest player in the entire Atlantic Cape squad makes the first. Again, he averages 87%, which is unprecedented for a big man. Typically, you see big men averaging a little bit less than what the team, the rest of the team averages as he makes the second also. And so Goloszewski is in 
Running the point now for the Jersey Blues. Mateo over to Sylvester, he'll take the three. Off the back iron, Jones will secure the board. Jones against Mateo. This is another good matchup. Cosme Almeida, the three ball. Short and it goes off the top of the backboard. Well, I think if you're Brooktail right now, you're happy with where this game is at. Eight point lead. They're playing their game, getting out in transition. Big thing is make sure you get a hand in the face of Atlantic Cape's big time shooters. Flood thought about it. He gets double teamed at the corner. That's the last thing you need as Devin Strickland kicks it over. Mateo open for three and pure. Kevin Mateo knocking down another three ball to make it 34-23. Brookdale on top of the Atlantic Cape Buccaneers. They're up by 11 now. Well, with Flood double team, that meant somebody was open and they found Mateo who takes advantage. Point over to Boston. That's a jumper and knocks it down. Mateo going inside, defended by Coit. Here's Galashevsky over to Mateo. Steps back, puts up a three, and knocks it down again. Kevin Mateo well into the double digit stat sheet right now, and points for the Jersey Blues. David Coit going inside, and almost blocked away, but Ron Flood the rebound. Brookdale now up by 12. Sylvester going inside in hot pursuit. Getting fouled. And let's see if this will be a foul going up or on the floor. One way or another, he'll have a chance at the line for either a one and one or two shots. It looks Ref like it's going to be two. The referee gestures two shots, so it'll be a foul going up. From up here, we could easily see that that could have been a one and one foul. But of course, Sylvester getting his shot at the line and making the first. Ozoji checking in for Galashevsky. So Sylvester, the 5'9", Passaic native, misses the second. And a rebound by Richard Jones. Brookdale with a 13 point lead. Jones goes inside on Sylvester. Blocked by Azoji and rebound secured by Azoji himself. Flood over to Sylvester. And back to Mateo at the logo. Defended by David Coit. Mateo going inside, putting it up. And no good, a rebound by Ansuelo Young. Coit looks to go inside. Fouled by Azoji. Yeah, Paul Chizak incredulous with that call also. And it's on Azoji, so that will be his third. Halliburton was ready to check in, but I think they're going to make him wait. Coit will go for his first and miss it. You know, Brian, surprisingly, Atlantic Cape, in their biggest strength, they're missing free throws. Yeah, it's a good point because we mentioned they shoot almost 80%, and we saw Jones, a 90% shooter, miss, and now Coit, well over 80% on the year. Not used to seeing them miss any attempts. Mateo taking it and defended by David Coit right now. The two leading scorers in hot pursuit against each other, and it's going to be called for a walk. That was just Kevin Mateo losing handle of his, or losing his footing as Atlantic Cave takes back possession. Richard Jones with that Brookdale with a 12-point cushion. David Coit 
Nice pass over to Aswello Young, who gets blocked away from Timmy Jombala. Coit for three, knocks it down. David Coit, pure from downtown, makes it 38-28. That's actually a long two by David Coit. Sylvester again from mid-range. Yeah, he's just so good at that move that in between the three-point and the drive mid-range makes a high percentage of those shots. And Swallow Young blocked by Ron Flood. It's a block party here in Lincroft. Coit over to Richard Jones, thinking about the three. Goes inside, over to Cosme Almeida, who mishandles the pass. David Coit, the fadeaway, no good. And a rebound secured by Ron Flood. Here's Mateo over to Devin Strickland, one-on-one -on -one with Najee Wright, and he finishes. Yeah, Strickland so good at finishing. Not a guy who shoots it from the outside. So much of his scoring comes right near the basket like he did there in transition. David Coy looking to go inside. Puts it up and knocks it down. What a pure jumper by David Coy. He's been putting on a show despite the score. That's why it's so hard. Like Brookdale has a 12-point lead, but you don't figure they can blow this team out because of their scores. They're going to keep this team in the game, and that's why it should go right down at the end. I'm just getting word from Danny Gulix keeping the stats that David Coit has 18 points already in the first half. That's the lowest amount of points he's gotten in just about a month. Every other game, he's been well over 18, whether in the 20-point column, 30-point column, or if you look at the last time he met against the Jersey Blues at Pitney Hall in Mays Landing, he netted 42 in that game. Kevin Mateo making the first at the line. Now Kevin Mateo, in that game, he netted, he scored four, he actually scored 22 points. But the thing was that he scored 18 points in the first half. And actually the first few minutes. Kevin Mateo made like five straight threes to start off the game, but he was ice cold for the rest of the game all throughout. As we fast forward back into the present time, David Coit putting up the floater and getting the shooter's roll. Yeah, we're seeing some nice rolls. We saw, was it Sylvester, that corner three, got the front rim and went down, and there Coit getting the nice shooter's bounce. Saw a little friendly exchange between Paul Chizek and Alan Raglan. How good, how good David Coit really is. He just cannot be stopped, but the thing is, is that Brookdale needs to stop and contain David Coit as much as possible, and then of course contain the rest of this team and tire them out because they have six players all together subbing in and out. Right, it's not quite what we saw the situation in the last women's game against Philadelphia where the same five had to play the entire game, but only one substitution, not too much better. Danny Galashevsky checking in for Kevin Mateo. A great first half performance for Kevin Mateo. I know Brian Gowsworth is so excited to bring you the play-by-play -play for the next half with Danny Gulix in just over 20 minutes here on Brookdale TV as Richard Jones knocking down a three ball from NBA range quieting the crowd and trimming the Brookdale lead down to 10. Yeah, we've seen kind of unlimited range. Jones and air ball from like close to 30 feet earlier, but that time rattles at home. Here's Flood over to Sylvester. Almost got picked away, and he does get picked away, but Timmy Jombala steps back with a jumper, baby jumper, no good. Foul's going to be called on Kobe. Check that, that's going to be on... Atlantic Cape. So Kobe Sylvester will have a chance at the line for two shots now as Brookdale's in the bonus plus. Now and they're, I, they're moving to the other end now. Yeah, I stand corrected. It will be an over the back foul on Kobe Sylvester, so Justin Boston will have a chance for a one and one.
Paul Chizek affirming that it is a one and one and making sure his players know about it. 21.7 seconds to go. Boston making the first. And he's another good free throw shooter at 76%. Sylvester checking back in for Ron Flood. So the current players on the floor is Strickland, Sylvester, Galashevsky, Jombala, and Mateo. For Atlantic Cape is Cosme Almeida, Boston, Coit, Wright, and Jones. Now that is an unseasonal air ball by Justin Boston. So utterly depressing free throw shooting performance by Atlantic Cape as Kevin Mateo gets defended closely by Coy, who puts up the floater. Doesn't get the shooter's roll. We're at 10.3 seconds to go. And the possession will go to Atlantic Cape. Brookdale initiating a full court press. So this will be the final 10 seconds you'll hear from me on the broadcast until the interviews later on tonight. David Coit putting it up, and that's gonna be a shooting foul on Danny Galashevsky. Well, a lot of fouls in this first half. Each team is maxed out with the number of 10. And Coit back at the line. And David Coit averaging 86% from the free throw line and misses another. I mean, you've documented it well, the free throw shooting, very uncharacteristic from the Buccaneers. They have left a lot of points out there. Danny Galashevsky with three seconds, takes it himself, gives it over to Sylvester, fade away, three, almost goes in. So we will end the first half 45-37, Brookdale with the advantage, but don't count out Atlantic Cape. We have a whole nother half for you coming up here on Brookdale TV. Brian Gowsworth will provide the play-by-play, -play, which is what I'm doing right now, and Danny Gulix will provide you the color commentary once again here on Brookdale TV. Stay tuned for more basketball and more interviews coming up throughout this game. So before we interact with fans here in Collins Arena, I'm going to interact with the women's head coach who's here in attendance, Rich Brunson. Coach, you got a huge game tomorrow against Northampton. How much will it mean if you can get that payback tomorrow? Oh, man, a, a big, in a big way. I mean, we had that game last time we played them. Our girls played tough. Uh, we actually played the best three quarters we can ever play, but we fell apart the last quarter. And, uh, but we had a good practice today, and we're looking forward to tomorrow's game. So what will the plan be for tomorrow uh, going against Northampton? And how will you make sure when you have that 17-point lead that you hold that and maybe even increase uh, later on? We, we just got to get smarter. You know, we had a great practice. We had a little powwow, and our girls understand that we got to take better care of basketball, too many turnovers. And the biggest thing, we got to handle their press. They got some quick guards. They got a nice uh, two bigs that I'm concerned about. So we got to play the perfect game in order to win. So our game plan is just that, contain those, those big girls and keep those guards from going uh, north-south. Three versus two, I hope you win. Congratulations you so and Appreciate good luck. It. Yeah, thank you. Why not? Magnus Sanchez, the Secretary of Student Government here into the Student Life Board. Oh my God, oh my God, it's great. great, thank you. Oh we love the drama. This is Mr. Andre Wells Sr. here. We've got all the energy here in Lincroft. We'll be right back with Brian Goudsward and Danny Gulix here on Brookdale TV. Stay tuned. we got a whole other half of great basketball coming at you. Don't go anywhere. And back inside the Collins Arena, Brian Goudsward now joined by Danny Gulick says the second half is underway. Brookdale and Atlantic Cape Region 19 tournament matchup. It's the Jersey Blues in front by eight. And Brookdale with possession to start the half. Halliburton goes inside for Flood. Back at Halliburton, catch and shoot off the side of the rim. And coming down with it is Cosme Alameda. Long pass ahead. Young missed it off the window. Jones is there 
for the follow and Danny Richard Jones a very quiet first half but he's on the board early here in the second half yeah Richard Jones a player who averages around 23 points per game only had four points in the first half on one made shot it was surprisingly quiet for him but he seems uh, it would be tough if he picks it up in the second half here Hall Halliburton 0 for 2 to start the half and then there's a blocking foul as Mateo goes down and so 50 seconds into the second half Brookdale picks up their first yeah, that first half was full of a lot of fouls, both teams over the limit. It just seemed to affect Atlantic Cape a little bit more than it affected Brookdale. Brookdale had more free throw opportunities and converted better from the line. That's where this lead's coming from, man. Yeah, both of these teams had their struggles from the free throw line, which in Atlantic Cape's case is much more rare. Jones firing away, no good. On the offensive rebound, Coit tries. This one is off. Brookdale can't get the rebound, though. Ball still loose, and the Buccaneers will have another possession out of it. Coit way outside, using the screen. One-on-one -on -one with Mateo. Right, gives it up. Coit with five to shoot, off-balance shot, misses. Another offensive rebound. Reset the shot clock again. Young throws it off the side of the glass. And finally, Ozoji for the Jersey Blues. And here they come. I honestly don't know what's scarier. Chizak screaming or Chizak quiet? Mateo, no. Comes right back to him. Another shot. Misses. And it's going. Which way will it go to the Buccaneers? A ice cold start from the floor to start the half. Both teams, man. Brookdale came into the half up eight points. It's only two points scored in two minutes of play. It's just how the first half started. We saw on Atlanta Cape's last possession, they had four or five chances and went 0 for. That's an offensive foul. Got to set your feet before you set the screen. A lot of whistles here. Typically, I don't like a game where the refs don't let them play, but at least that tonight it's been consistent, which is a very good thing to say on both sides. Head coach Alan Raglan, none too pleased with the last call, had a very confused look on his face. Flood drive and dish, Ozoji trying on the save, but unsuccessful. It was a nice find by Ron Flood, just Ozoji could not handle the, could not handle the pass there right off his hands, going out of bounds. This is the 4-5 matchup in the region tournament. Winner will play in the 1-8 matchup, which is also tonight, Union at Montgomery. Right is fouled. Looked like Halliburton got his hand on the wrist there. It's a good call by the ref. Now Big story from the first half. Atlanta Cape did not shoot well from the free throw line. Around 50%, which is very different from their roughly 79% on the season. They're really going to need to convert these opportunities to have a chance in this game. And Wright is another good free throw shooter as he makes that one. Devin Strickland checking in for Halliburton. And one more attempt coming up for the Trenton, New Jersey product. It's the third time these teams have met this season. This one, wow. though, counts the most after splitting the two during the regular year. Meanwhile, Brookdale really struggling to get defensive rebounds. Richard Jones, nice hook pass, but it's out of bounds on Swello Young, turns it over. As I was saying pregame, it's whoever rebounds the most and whoever passes the most. Brookdale's really been holding it down in the assist category tonight. AC is playing some hero ball with David Coit having 21 points in the first half. But Brookdale's getting eaten up on the glass here early in the second. Andre Wells really got tied up. What a move to the basket wow. and he banks it in. What a finish by Andre Wells. That's his seventh point of the matchup. Look at that move. Wow, nice touch off the glass there. 47-40 Brookdale. Jones splitting the defense. Tough move, he couldn't finish it. And Ozoji the rebound. 
Alan Azoji has been a monster tonight. Four points, three assists, and up to nine rebounds now. Flood back for Wells. Thought about it, now he drives. And it's rebounded by Wright. Andre Wells looking for the foul on that play. Coy taking it all the way, blocked by Ozoji. Oh, got the outstretched arm out there. He's and just too big, man. I don't know if you're gonna see a good, oh, yeah, you can see it there. Beautiful block by Alan Ozoji. Coy to inbound. Right, jab, step, big man on big man. He spins, he's in the paint. He forces it up and it will stay with the Buccaneers. Ball rolled off Alan Azoji's arm there. He was looking for a foul call. Just run flood and Azoji straight up. You're not gonna get that. Another inbound underneath. Bounce it in for right. Jones, and it's going the other way. Take the basket off the board. Brookdale will have it. Offensive foul. It's a great call by the ref. Moving screen, another one. Got to set the feet before you set the screen. Well, the Jersey Blues have Flood, Wells, Mateo, Strickland, and Ozoji. The five on the floor as they operate with a seven-point lead. Quickly ahead is Wells. Now he turns back around. Ozoji, smaller defender is Cosme Alameda, and he'll go to the line. Great way to utilize the mismatch there. Go straight up on him, let him slap your elbow. Ozoji to the line, a 55% free throw shooter. And one who brings sophomore experience, and he is the lone sophomore left. Nails it. Brookdale has 11 assists. They averaged 17 on the season. They're having a great night distributing the ball. The ball movement's been amazing, not playing selfish, and they're controlling the tempo all night. They've been playing their game. Two added two. They really have to give credit to Brookdale on the defensive side going against a team that averages just under 92 points a game, but well under that pace so far. Coit on a bounce. Wright had it denied, but Brookdale can't get it across midcourt, and Paul Chizek is, to say he's upset would be an understatement. That was Alan Azochi's fourth block of the contest so far. And I stand corrected. A, a screaming Chizek is definitely scarier than a quiet one. Jones able to pick it up and he's tripped up by Wells. It'll be Brookdale's third of the second half. It's Wells' third also. Both players diving for the ball. Wells just caught up in an awkward position. Leading score against leading score. Coit and Mateo on the drive. Coit missed it. Fight for it. And the possession arrow favors Atlantic Cape. Kobe Sylvester on his way in for Paul Chizek's group. Wells goes to the bench. We'll see if Sylvester can provide that instant offense that he so often does. Kobe Sylvester leading the points in the competition for Brookdale. 14 in the first half along with two assists and two rebounds. They tend to shoot for Atlantic Cape after this little delay, wiping off the basketball. Hey, some sweaty guys, it happens. The crowd is loud tonight. There's a lot of Atlantic Cape fans here also, but you're not gonna be able to hear them over this Brooktail home crowd. Inbended for Jones, catching fire, he's got it. It's a long two-pointer. That was a great play. A nice inbounds by Atlantic Cape to find Richard Jones, their second leading scorer. 49-42, Brookdale in front. Sylvester catch and shoot, short. And getting up for the rebound is Boston. What a rebound, man, around three people. Jones gets higher. it settled down. 
Jones drives, takes it himself wow. in the finger roll for two. Only four points in the first half. He's up to 10 total. Just over five minutes gone by and Brookdale is going to take a timeout. 14.55 remaining, full timeout. This one looks like it's headed to go right down to the wire tonight. The Jersey Blues in front by five as we take a break. My name is Darren Cabrera, I'm from Perth Ambu, New Jersey and I graduated from Matter Day Prep. I'm the point guard of the Brookdale basketball team and the reason I came to Brookdale is because it's close to home, it has amazing academics amazing athletics, and when I grow older, I'm trying to become a dentist. I major in health science, and I really love the campus. It's very beautiful, and I like the way that I am welcomed into the community. Uh, my name is Andrew Solomon. I'm a forward at uh, Brookdale. I'm from Manasquan, New Jersey, and I chose Brookdale because the coaches were all welcoming and the past success. My name is Keyshawn Roche. I'm from Perth Amboy, New Jersey. I play guard for this team. Uh, I decided to come to Brookdale because we have a great coaching staff and I thought it would be a great place for me to start my uh, basketball career. Um, we have a national championship track record and Coach Chizak is a Hall of Fame coach. I thought there would be no place better for me to grow myself as a basketball player. Brian Goudsworth, Danny Gulick, rest of our Brookdale TV crew with you. Dominic Samo will rejoin us during the post-game portion. And the Jersey Blues lead it by 5, 49-44 with the basketball. Sylvester and turns it over into the hands of Jones. Richard Jones out to the corner. Double team there. Boston was up and under wow. and it's last touch by Flood. That was a lucky possession by Atlanta Cape. That's a turnover nine times out of ten. Just slipped right into the chest of Ron Flood. Couldn't handle the pass. Dan Goloszewski is in replacing Sylvester. Inbound it for Coit. Coit for three. It's good. That's, David Coit from long range. That is a mismatch if I've ever seen one. And that's not height wise. That is just pure offensive skill by David Coit. This is a two point game. Mateo, he tries it three. This one, good. Oh. Wow, Kevin Mateo, four threes made. You can count that while it's in the air. Jones, a bomb for three, short. And the rebound to Strickland. They're playing a heat check game here. Oh, good hustle by Kevin Mateo. He's able to keep it with the Jersey Blues and they'll get set up at the top. The Atlantic Cape sticking in this 3-2 zone that they ran at the start of the first half. Ozoji off the mark, scooped up by Young. It's a run out and Jones is all alone for the layup. Only a three point lead here for Brookdale. Mateo bombs away. Oh, oh. Kevin Mateo. Five threes made. Kevin Mateo's testing out the cavalry tonight. There's no limit to his range. Coit, the answer, doesn't go. It's rebounded by Ozoji. Kevin Mateo is that guy. He's looking for space. He wants to shoot, but thought better of it. Ozoji inside. Draws the foul. Wow. Azoji's just so long, man. He's got the build of Kevin Durant where his fingertips touch his knees while he's standing straight up. It's hard to guard a man with that wingspan. Kevin Mateo is feeling himself here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. He's got 19 points. Coming off a game where he scored 16. And the win over Union, it's been a week since Brookdale last played. And in the month of February, the games were fast and furious. There was not a lot of time for rest. Azoji is not shooting well tonight. Four for seven from the uh, free throw line, excuse me. Shot about 55% in the regular season. So 
It's roughly his average. Second attempt. It's good. And after splitting a pair of free throws, he'll come out in favor of Timmy Jombala. Brookdale with a seven point lead. Gotta watch that man Coit. Here's Jones. He missed it. It'll stay with the Buccaneers as the officials look at each other. Looked like that ball kind of flew off the hands of Timmy G when he was trying to get the rebound. Jones for three. He's wow. got another one. What a touch on that guy's shot. Just a beautiful release. This team shoots it as a team 40% from behind the arc. That's yeah. the outstanding Jambala. Timmy G, he's on the board. 12 minutes to go. What a game this is shaping up to be. Coit. Swing it inside. Wow. Young tried to rock the rim, but no. He got up and over Timmy G. Mateo tripped up, fouled by Jones. He disagrees. They call a blocking there. 15 foul. Brookdale has been charged with three. Mateo long three. Too strong there. Here comes Coit leading the charge. Contact, offensive foul. And Mateo the one who took the hit. Mateo might be the best charge taker I've ever seen. Timeout on the floor will give us a chance to catch our breaths. 58-52, Brookdale leads, 11.34 to go. We'll be back to the Collins Arena. My name is Danny Galaszewski. I'm from Cerevo, New Jersey. I went to Cerevo High School. I'm a point guard here at Brookdale, and I chose Brookdale because during the recruitment process, they really made me feel like a family and that I fit in perfectly. My name is Niles Halliburton. I graduated from Madawan Regional High School. I play small four at Power Four for Brookdale Basketball. And the reason why I came here is because it's the best fit for me and I'm looking to win the win this year. Uh, hi, I'm Kobe Sylvester. I'm from Passaic, New Jersey. And I went to Passaic High School in Passaic, New Jersey. Uh, I'm the point guard and the two guard on the team. And the reason I, I chose Brookdale is because I felt like it was the best decision for me and my family. And, uh, and I saw that they won a regional and I want to be part of that. Hi, my name is Andre Wells. I'm from New Jersey, and I went to Matawan Regional High School. I'm a point guard for the Brookdale men's basketball team, and I chose Brookdale because it's a good fit for me and my family, and the basketball program is very successful. Crowd has been treated to a good one here, Danny. Brookdale by six, but you just get the feeling these two go-to scorers for Atlantic Cape, especially with Jones getting hot here in the second half, Buccaneers are going to hang around. Yeah, David Coit, kind of quiet these past eight and a half minutes, only three points in the half. But Richard Jones, he's up to 15 after starting the game with only four in the first half. So, I mean, it's a one and one game for them. If one's not going, the other is. Winner of this game, as a side note, also takes the Garden State Athletic Conference crown. Strickland wow. from Mateo and the bucket. What a finish there by Devin Strickland on a beautiful find from Kevin Mateo. Found a hole in that zone and they abused it. Jones jump pass and it rolls out of bounds. Amazing defense there by Ron Flood. Head on a swivel, get his hand in the pocket. Poke that ball away. Coit uses the screen, gets to the basket, shot off the glass, no. Wow. And there's a foul as Wright was able to come down with it and he'll go to the line. Foul on Ron Flood. Brookdale's really been holding on to this five to eight point lead these past almost 10 minutes. 
as Wright hits the first. 87% free throw shooter. He's been their most consistent tonight. Five for seven so far. Looking to make it six for eight. And, and he does. Back to a six point game. They're gonna keep applying some pressure, but Golshevsky able to advance and Strickland, he wow. scores. With the left. What a finish there. Beautiful floater after the contact by Devin Strickland. Jones gives it up. Open look, it's right, in and out. Ball knocked up in the air. Gonna call that, I believe, on Timmy G over the back. Yep. Paul Chizek for yet another time displeased. And you get the most animated version of Paul Chizek as the games get bigger oh, in meeting. Nice steal by Ron Flood. Here's Mateo to the basket. Rejected, but Strickland all with the follow, all in one motion. Jersey Blues back up by 10. Enter the post. Young, Baxson against Jombala. Goes up, missed it, knocked out of bounds. It stays with Atlantic Cape. About halfway through the second half, Coy gets doubled. Ron Flood has been a defensive anchor this second half. He's everywhere on the floor. Young and he gets a block. Screw it up, and the Brookdale comes down with it. Lead Mateo up the floor. Rejected by Wright. And one player on each side has to get back into the area play after this rejection. And we've seen a couple of them lately. Kevin Mateo limping around the court here. He's staying on the floor, though. Oh, spoke too soon. Mateo takes his seat on the bench. Didn't head over to the training table, so that's a good sign for him. Andre Wells comes in as a sub. Here's Coy putting on moves. Stripped to the ball. Flood able wow, to save. What a save. And here come the Jersey Blues. Strickland feeds Wells. Oh, a follow by Jabala. What a follow through by Timmy G. He's got the arena rocking. That time we got a fist pump from Paul Chizek. Don't often see that. His team up by 12. Jones to the basket. A nice finish there by Richard Jones around the rim. He's got a nice touch. But even after the basket, Collins Arena still moving. I can feel the ground shake. By far the best atmosphere of any game this season inside nine minutes to play. I have chills, Brian. I have chills. Goloszewski batted and taken by Jones. And here come the Buccaneers. Coy pull up jump. Won't go, long rebound, Goloszewski. Goloszewski making a huge difference here down the stretch. Stats don't show it, but he's just out here making plays, hockey assists. 8.29 left, full timeout. This Region 19 tournament matchup. We continue on Brookdale TV in just a moment. Uh, my name is Devin Strickland. I went to South Brunswick High School. I'm from South Brunswick. I play small forward on the Brookdale men's basketball team. I came to Brookdale because of the coaching staff and the winning coaches. And then I just fell in love with the school from there. Hello, my name is Kevin Mateo, point guard at Brookdale, Brookdale Community College. Uh, born and raised in Hackensack, New Jersey. And I came to Brookdale because Brookdale is a winning environment and this is something I wanted to be part of. Hello, my name is Fresh Cabrera and I'm from Perth Ambo, New Jersey. My position over here at the school is a shooting guard. The reason I, I chose to come to Brookdale is because it helped me become a better person and it makes me chase my success. My name is Ron Flood. I'm from Union, New Jersey. I graduated from Union High School. I play forward here at Brookdale. I chose Brookdale because they have a very successful basketball team as well as an architecture program.
might be the game of the year so far. We've seen some good ones here at the Collins Arena, but none that have had this kind of intensity. And the Jersey Blues try to hold on the final eight and a half minutes up by 10. This game feels way closer than a 10 point game here, Brian. Atlanta Cape feels like they're only down one point. It really does feel a lot closer than it is. Strickland is blocked. And that time it was right. Jones splitting the defense and wow. he lays it in. He's got 19, a 15 point half from Richard Jones. Andre Wells will bring it up. Just so tough to stop those two players. Can't stop them both. There's no point of trying. Just give them one. Goloszewski's pull up. He got wow. it. Wow. Dan Goloszewski's on the board with a big shot. Playing some face up defense on David Coit. Coit and Jones carrying this Atlantic Cape team to an 18 and 6 record during the regular season as Young is there to clean up that shot and now Coit is in a little bit of discomfort. Look like he might have got hit in the back of the head. No matter how soft, it's not fun getting hit in the back of the head. Well, you know he's going to try his absolute best to stay in the game. It doesn't look like he has any intention of exiting, especially with Atlantic Cape shorthanded, only six players. Speaking of guys that don't look to exit, Kevin Mateo back in the game after slightly scary knee issue he was having earlier. Foxing out Coit on the inbound. So Brookdale has Wells, Mateo, Strickland, Jombala, and Flood. Mateo for three. Off the back rim, offensive rebound to Flood. Find Strickland inside, missed it. Follow, no, another try. Strickland again, and if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Devin Strickland said, you are too small. This is my backboard, this is my bucket. Richard wow. Jones, he frequently has had the answer for the Buccaneers. Did not matter about the kind of defense that was being played there. Extra pass for Wells called on a travel. Wow. Got to put that ball on the floor before you take a step. And you'll see the put back here by Devin Strickland. He's too small. Seventy to sixty-two. Coit, Young the catch, backs up with it. Jones works it back, bombs it. Oh, wow. Richard Jones, are you kidding? He's now tied David Coit, 24-24, leading scorer for Atlantic Cape. There, there's no limit to the three-point shots tonight. Wells bounces, Mateo, conventional three, missed it. Jambala scoops up the loose ball, Mateo fakes, floater, banks it wow. in and gets the roll. Mateo's got a 20 piece himself. Seven point separation. Coy, screen comes, make a move to the basket, adjusting, count it. Are they gonna count it? Let's see. Uh, and the foul, looks like it be a chance at a three point play. I'm gonna call a continuation, I believe. Seemed like there was some indecision by the officials, but it is a chance at a three-point play nonetheless. Chance to cut the lead to four. He missed it, and wow. it's rebounded by Flood. Coit uncharacteristically off from the free throw line tonight. Mateo shoots at three. Yes! Wow! 
Mateo, that's his sixth made three tonight. We've seen some bombs out of that guy. Coit stepping back, gives Am up his dribble and the ball. Amazing double team there by Timmy John Bala. Jones crossover, goes to the corner. Again. Right inside the arc, rimming no and rebounded by Flood. Jesus. I don't know what Ron Flood's career high in rebounds in a game is, but he's getting up there. He's got 13 on the glass. Brookdale 75, Atlantic Cape 67. Flood for Strickland through the paint. Might have had it blocked. Jumball is going to the line. It was hanging on the rim, but he'll shoot two. Right place, right time by Timmy G getting that offensive rebound. You wish he would have converted, but two from the line. A 56%, or excuse me, a, oh no, 56% free throw shooter. Misses the first. Cosme Almeida picked up the foul, that's number four, and he sits. Brookdale will now be in the bonus as Atlantic Cape has picked up 17 fouls. Second attempt for the big men and one out of two. He's got five. Every man on the floor contributor for Brookdale here tonight. Coy high off the glass, late whistle, and they get a foul. Didn't have room to land. You got to stay out of that area, keep him safe. Boy, during the regular season, 86%. It's two for five tonight. You gotta expect him to make both of these. This is a guy who scored 40 or better three different times this season. He gets the role that time. Led the region in scoring, three pointers made, three point percentage, and oh by the way, fifth in assists. And here he's got two free throws. David Coy is just that guy. Mateo bounces for Jombala. On the block, kick it back out. Goloszewski finds Strickland wow. for the easy two. Devin Strickland's got 12. Goloszewski with a beautiful find and some great defense here in this half. Coy, not that time. Offensive rebound, Young. Jambala might have gotten his big mitts on that one. Jambala's got three blocks. It's a block party in Brookdale. Four for his OG, three for Jambala, and two for Flood. The bigs are out to play. Short stoppage again as the maintenance crew tends to the floor. A lot of people on the floor tonight. Trying to hit that right wing. Jones using the screen back to the top of the key. Drives, kick it, Coy knocks wow. it down, it's a three. And with three and a half to go, it's a six point game. Coit's got 31. He's over his season average. Mateo uh, could not keep it in bounds. Just off the fingertips, a little out of bounds. Mateo tried to look like Santonio Holmes on that play. Couldn't quite get it. Cosme Alameda returns for Justin Boston. As the Buccaneers try to get closer, currently down by six. It's Coy, he's dangerous. Mateo gets up defensively, Coy inside, Young gets wow. it to go. What a finish by Onswallo Young. Onswallo, excuse me. Brookdale cannot just sit here with this ball. They gotta make sure that they get a basket. 
Mateo's floater. That goes down for two. Mateo heard me up in the box. He said, you know what, I got you. Let me give you this one. 80 to 74. Will the Buccaneers have the answer? Jones tries, missed it. Offensive rebound, Young, who touched it last. The officials confer and it's Atlantic Cape basketball. Six point lead for Brookdale, two and a half left. Coit. Oh, tipped. He missed that one. Timmy John Bala gets his hand on it. And Kevin Mateo with the rebound. Brookdale will slow it down. As we come up on the two minute mark, Strickland bumped along Whoa. the baseline. Wells flying in. And a foul called. What a pass by Devin Strickland. All smiles for that man. And Wells like a locomotive going to the basket. Not the tallest man on the court, but he can move. And kind of an up and down year for Wells, but he's a very important player for this team. He's a guy that you could see improving a lot going into year two. Seven points, three assists, three boards for him tonight with a three-pointer made. Let's see what he can do at the line. No good on the first. Jonathan Cosme Alameda has fouled out for the Buccaneers. So they will go with five the rest of the way. Final 208. Well, 77% from the line on the season. Second attempt, one added two. Big free throw made there by Andre Wells. Brookdale's got a seven point lead here. Jones easily wow. getting to the basket. Just an easy shot there. Two minutes left. It's crunch time. Some may call it the witching hour. Whoa. Swing it for Flood. Flood drives, finds John Bala, not looking to shoot. Get it reset on the perimeter. 10 on the timer now. Mateo looking for an option. Mateo gets to the basket, high off the glass, and he'll shoot as he's pushed. It's another foul on David Coit. That'll be his fourth. That's big time trouble. One more foul and he's out. Kevin Mateo, he needs this. He's got 26 on the night. He is four for seven from the line. So Coit will have to be very careful on the defensive end. Mateo ah. unable to hit. Rough night for him. Averages 85% from the line on the season. Only four for seven tonight, almost 50%. It's been kind of the story. A lot of great free throw shooters struggling. Mateo is the best on Brookdale's side, but having an off night, not from three point range. Absolutely not from three. He goes one out of two and we'll have a timeout. 91 seconds to go tonight, full timeout on the floor and we return after these messages. My name is Ryan Neely. I'm from Freelboro High School. I play shooting guard here at Brookdale. And the reason I chose Brookdale was because of the price and it's close to home. My name is Darren Cabrera. I'm from Perth Amboy, New Jersey, and I graduated from Matter Day Prep. I'm the point guard of the Brookdale basketball team, and the reason I came to Brookdale is because it's close to home. It has amazing academics, amazing athletics, and when I grow older, I'm trying to become a dentist. I major in health science, and I really love the campus. It's very beautiful, and I like the way that I am welcomed into the community. Uh, my name is Andrew Solomon. I'm a forward at uh, Brookdale. I'm from Manasquan, New Jersey, and I chose Brookdale because the coaches were all welcoming and the past success. My name is Keyshawn Roche. I'm from Perth Amboy, New Jersey. I play guard for this team. Uh, I decided to come to Brookdale because we have a great coaching staff and I thought it would be a great place for me to start my uh, basketball career. Um, we have a national championship track record and Coach Chizak is a Hall of Fame coach. I thought there would be no place better for me to grow myself as a basketball player. How you doing? My name is Tim Jambala. I went to Jacksonville High School. I'm a forward slash center. 
The reason I chose Brookdale, because I believe that the coaching staff can make me the best player I can be. One of four games on the Region 19 tournament slate here tonight. And this one here on Brookdale TV, it's been a real treat with the Jersey Blues up by six, 82-76. Atlantic Cable had possession. Coit is on the floor with four personal fouls. Buccaneers have already lost one due to fouls. That's Cosme Alameda. Under a minute and a half to go. Down the stretch we go. It is loud here. Young puts it up off the rim, tapped up in the air. Coy tried to pick it up, scrambled for the ball near the baseline. And it stays with Atlantic Cape. Inbounder is Najee Wright. Again, more maintenance. This could be our final broadcast here on Brookdale TV of the season. So I want to take a moment to thank all the broadcast partners I've worked with, Danny Gulick, Dominic Sama, who you'll hear from come post game, Ian Mulhern as well. And thanks to everyone in the control room on the cameras, our entire crew for great work all season long. Oh, and they're going to call Flood behind the back on that. For Flood, that is his second. Wright is at the line. Wright nails the first. Wright been their most consistent option at the line. He's seven for nine tonight. Great on the season, 87%. Just got a quick score update that Philadelphia is leading Salem. So it looks like they will advance. Second attempt, that's good. Four point game. Minute 05, left on the clock, and Goloszewski takes a timeout. Didn't have a good option on the inbounds, and so he plays it better safe than sorry. This game's gonna come down to the absolute last second here. And update, Philadelphia did beat Salem 73 to 57 to move on in the playoffs here. So that is a final from Philadelphia. The top five seeds in the region on the men's side go Montgomery, Northampton, Philadelphia, and then these two, Brookdale and Atlantic Cape in the four and five spots respectively. So the winner tonight plays the winner of the 1-8 matchup also being played tonight between Union and Montgomery. Jersey Blues who lost just once in front of their home fans this season, and that was in overtime. That gives you an idea how tough it is to beat Brookdale here in Lincourt. Looking to hold on tonight. Atlanta Cape has been in it, and if anything gotten closer in the second half. Mateo, tough wow. catch, and draws the foul as he hits the deck. What a inbounds pass. Put it right in the pocket. Throw him on the football field, man. Yeah, that was a good 20-yard completion. Call it a first down and the foul. A penalty for pass interference. Kevin Mateo getting to the line. He's five for nine tonight. First attempt, no good. Too strong. He's down to 50% on the evening. Paul Shizak does not look happy. Well, he's had a good night overall, just not from the line. He's been lighting it up from three-point range. And he gets the roll, 83-78. We hit one minute remaining. It's Coit 
Count the basket plus the foul. A chance at a three-point play and a chance to make it a two-point game. Wow. Let's see, foul was on Ron Flood. His third of the evening. David Coit cannot say enough about this freshman. 33 points here. Chance for 34. Nails it. Had one of his 40-point games against Brookdale, the meeting in Atlantic Cape. In for Wells. Pressure comes, high pass, Strickland reels it in, gets to the basket, and he's fouled. As you might tell Danny, this game is expending a lot of energy. Not sure if I'm gonna have much of a voice after this one. Uh, it, it's been a rough one. Now let me ask you a question. David Coit, four fouls, and Atlanta Cape only has five players available to play. What if he fouls out? What would happen? We would play five on four. And that's happened before. We saw it for a brief moment in our last women's telecast. But you know Coit is going to be extra careful. Meanwhile, Strickland needs a make here to make it a three-point game. Second attempt, up, and gets the roll. 84-81, 45 ticks remaining. They can tie with a three. Coit going for the two, no! Mateo's got it for Brookdale. Brookdale can dribble it down to about 10 seconds left. Gotta be careful here. Buccaneers going for the steal. No look pass. Strike wow. Streaks in. What a find from Jobala. It's a two possession lead. Jones to the basket. Missed it. Follow. Misses. Strickland's got it. They need They'll a foul. Back up. Atlanta Cape has to foul, and they do with Jones on Wells. And Brookdale can smell it now. It is getting loud in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Brookdale has a Brook a playoff win in their fingertips. Just a couple made free throws separate them from the win. Chizak saying, don't let up. Hit these shots. There we go. What a hard fought game it has been tonight. Both games during the regular season decided inside of 10 points. Andre Wells trying to send him home. They missed it. Rebounded by Young. Door is open for the Buccaneers. Jones tees it up. Missed it. Jumbal has got it. Atlanta Cape has to foul. Throw it ahead for Mateo in the last five seconds. Mateo missed the layup, but the final second runs off. This game is over. Start the buses, ladies and gentlemen. Brookdale comes out on top, 87-81, an electric win here. Let me check for a score update if we know their opponent. The Jersey Blues will play the winner of number one Montgomery and number eight Union County. The Jersey Blues get it done. They knew it wasn't gonna be easy going in when they knock off Atlantic Cape as the Buccaneers season comes to a halt and the Jersey Blues move on in the Region 19 tournament and Danny I mean this game the second half possession for possession every point was huge and you know, as we talked about the missed free throws played a huge role for Atlantic Cape if they were at their typical average we might be going to overtime right now. Uh, if we were at their typical average, they might have won the game here tonight. A lot of missed opportunities, a lot of missed free throws, but that can be said on both sides of the ball. It was a big game, a big second half here, and honestly, I'd have to give this second half MVP to Devin Strickland, man. He was everywhere. Ended the game with 15 points, three assists, three rebounds. Made such a difference on the defensive end, man. Cannot wait to see who we play in the second round of the playoffs. Now there's an outside chance Brookdale will have another game here at home. Otherwise, their season will continue on the road. But another fun season it has been here on the call. 
for Jersey Blues basketball. And Danny, your first season in the books, a, a lot of fun. Uh, it's It's been amazing, but hey, let, let's keep the talk. Let's keep that talk down. Hopefully we'll be home for the next game. And hopefully we'll be home just to call another playoff game this season, man. But if that was it, it's been a fun season. Once again, the final score, it's Brookdale 87, Atlantic Cape 81. And we thank you for joining us here tonight for Danny Gulick, Dominic Samo, who we'll hear from in the post game. He'll get some of the post game reaction. Should hear from Coach Paul Chizek, a couple of players as well. Thanks again for listening. For Danny, Brian Gadsworth saying so long from the broadcast booth here at the Collins Arena. And we'll see if we can keep it going here on Brookdale TV. So long. What's going to be the game plan for now? You guys are playing against Montgomery. They just won against Union County. Did they? Uh, they just did. Okay. Uh, it was a walloping from what I saw on the score, about 81 to 56. Okay. So what will be the game plan for uh, later on this week against them? They're the number one team. You haven't played them yet. Well, there's not a lot. Of <laughs> there's not much turnaround time. Tomorrow we have practice at 4.30. We're on the road Thursday. So... Um, we're going to have to work. We've kind of studied them a little bit. Uh, we're just going to have to do some things a little bit better than we did today. We didn't shoot the free throw very well when we could have iced it. Um, I thought we played pretty good defense. I knew they were rested. I knew that both of those guards could really stroke it and shoot it. Um, you know, one's going to Northern Illinois, Coit, and the other kid played at Mississippi Valley State. So they're good. And uh, I thought we did a pretty good job on them. And uh, some guys stepped up and made some big plays. We had a nice crowd. You know, we'll, we'll go to work tomorrow and then get on the road and and uh, we'll see what we got, you know. Well, I, I, we'll be ready. You know, I think uh, we need a little rest and uh, we'll go right back and Thursday on the road. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we'll have Kevin Mateo here in just a second here on Brookdale TV, but we'll be right back in one second. <laughs> Huge performance for you. Whole bunch of threes you netted and... Uh, how did it feel when you, uh, when you stroked it every time and now you're heading over to Montgomery? That's a tough place to play. Uh, yeah, thanks, my man. You know, this is a win we needed. You know, I always feel good when I shoot the three. I always think it's going to go in because, you know, that's what I practice. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we never got to play Montgomery. We never had them on the regular season. So we're excited for, uh, for, what's, for, for what's to come, you know. What do you think uh, is going to prevail uh, throughout the week now? You guys uh, playing against Montgomery, it's going to be later this week. What's a, what do you think the game plan is going to be for your guys and you? Um, honestly, the last stretch of the season, what's been working for us is just the defense. Our offense could come through whatever, you know, we're just good all around to score 80, 90 points on any given day, you know. It just starts with our defense. That's the only thing that we need to start off with. From there, we just go. Kevin Mateo, congratulations, brother. I appreciate it. So that will be in the end of it. For all of us here in Brookdale TV, Brian Goudsward, Danny Gulix, my name is Dominic Sama, and we'll see you next time 